life is already complicated enough, let's just make an easy soil mix. Hey what's up guys, yes, I'm Christina from Leafy Luster and today I have a very chill soil mix video for you. I ran out of soil mix so I thought I'd share all my soil amendments and ratios with you today. A lot of you have already asked me about it so here we go. I also need to desperately repot a few plants so I will take you along as well. Question number one, why do I even have to mix my own soil mix? Um, you don't, so you could obviously use the store-bought plant mix. I don't think that your plants will die immediately, but I think with the store-bought soil you run a lot more risks of killing your plant. By using a self-made mix you have a lot more power to accommodate to the conditions of your house, to the plant's needs, to your personal watering habits and plant care habits, to your pots if you use plastic pots, terracotta pots, all of that stuff. You have a lot of points that you can adjust in your soil mix like nutrients, airiness, water retention, all that stuff. So there's a lot you can like shift a little bit by mixing your own soil. Everything that I use today will be linked down in the description box so you can check it out yourself and do some research on it if you're interested. You really can tell it's Sunday since I have my fuzzy socks on and I'm just comfy all the way. A few years back I saw a video from Kaylee Allen on her Aeroid mix and this is the baseline for my mix as well. Through the years I have got some new input from other plant people and from my personal experience but in essence what you want to achieve and I know a lot of plant people say the same thing yeah it needs to be airy and chunky but what do we mean by this? Once you see the ingredients it will be very clear what is meant by this. It is so important to have more aeration and like chunkiness in your soil because you want to prevent the compacting of the soil. The roots will have a very hard time breathing, especially with our tropical aeroid houseplants. They tend to like a little bit more air circulation on their roots, so yeah. First off, I will be using this huge bin that I have. I used to use this as my soil bin and then I also could do all my repotting in there already. I also have ooh, this bin right now. I will be keeping the soil in here. All of the amendments that I'm going to use are ready to use except for this one. This is Cocoa Choir. This is kind of a new addition to my soil for the past three years. I didn't use it. It is pressed, so it needs to be mixed with water to like expand again. I'm going to re-wet this really quick. each soil amendment you add you will achieve something different. The first thing that I'm going to use is regular soil mix. I just buy a regular soil from the garden center, nothing too fancy. You just have to check if it is already fertilized or not. This might change your fertilizing habits later on. These are five liters of soil mix. Next I will add five liters of orchid bar. I like this one because it's nice and small. The bark pieces aren't too big. It's a mix of pine bark and cocoa chips. Next up, I'm going to add the perlite. That's five liters of perlite as well. And no, I don't wash it beforehand. Next up, I'm adding 1.5 kilograms of this warm castings. Since this is a natural fertilizer, you don't run the risk of burning the roots or burning the plant with an overdose. So this is just warm poop. Looks like some regular soil. It's nice and fine. And then lastly, which is a fairly new addition to my mix, the finely mixed cocoa fibers. Since I find that this mix right here is a little bit too dry and it doesn't retain water as well. So I have issues with the plants drying out too quickly, especially in terracotta pots. So I want to add a component that is a little bit more water retaining. 
in one of these packs there's seven liters so I'll start with that. With the perlite and the orchid bark I can ensure that there's enough air pockets in the soil that the roots can get a lot of oxygen. The warm castings are for fertilizing effects. Then we have our regular soil here and also the coco choir for some extra moisture retention. Now it's time for the best part of the whole process is to dig in and mix everything up. So I will just start and then check if it's too compact still. In this case I would add a little bit more perlite or bark. It's so fun to dig around in it and just feeling the soil, it's amazing. Mixing your own soil is so freaking therapeutic that you should do it only because of that, actually. <laughs> I'm all done now. I like the consistency a lot. I think the Coco Choir has helped a ton. It already feels a lot more wet, but in a good way. <laughs> I tend to overdo it a little bit on the perlite front, so I'm proud of myself that I haven't this time. Wow! I will definitely use this thing up in like half a year or something. My end result consists of this ratio right here. I'm going to scoop some soil into my working bin, all filled up. Now let's put up some babies. Yeah, it's repot time. Well, I have this Syngonium aurea that really needs some love and repotting. The roots are extremely root bound. Syngonium roots grow really quickly and I could literally repot them every week. You can see how root bound she really is. The roots come out of the bottom and also here you can see that the roots are going round and round the pot. I'm just going to take her out and check the roots a little bit. You see how much the roots really are stuck in the bottom. You can check if they are rotten or not, if you give them a little pull. If they don't rip and they stay firm, they are still healthy. I will just loosen it very, very lightly. I could either pot her up into the same pot again. Now that I have removed some soil, there would still be rooms and I think I will do that. Let's take some fresh soil, like so. Number one is done. I potted it back into the same pot. The roots still have space to grow downwards now. And the only thing you really need to care about is don't bury the stems deeper than they were before. Next I have this pink princess that is in this tiny pot down here. And she's getting so heavy on the top that she keeps falling. So I need to give her a little bit of a bigger pot. I have my box with planters in here. I think I want to size up this pot into this one. Might be a little bit too big but I just won't fill it with soil as much and it should be fine. I won't even disturb the roots. I just want to stick this pot in here. So let's check the roots first. You see I had a really really dry soil here and it's not compacted at all. It just falls right off. I might have used a little bit too much perlite in the previous one. <laughs> now I've got a really cool trick for you. So put in a little bit of soil, then put in the old pot and fill the sides with soil. Just take it out and you see we've got a hole in the size of the previous pot. So now I can just stick in the roots and cover it a little bit with soil and we're good. Give it a little tap so everything settles a little bit. Since it has outgrown its little tiny baby pole, I will attach a new one. Carefully put it down the soil, press it a little bit. And now I'm going to attach it with a little bit of wire. Here we have it. Moving on to our Alucasia poly. So let's take her out. She has really nice roots down here. Propagating with alocasia is really easy because every time you repot, you can just look for bulbs. And I wouldn't have thought that this tiny baby alocasia has already some bulbs, but look. Look what I found. This thing right here, this little bulb, you can just snap it off like so and then put this into moss or water or coco choir that is wet. 
keep it moist and warm and it will grow a new plant. Cool. This is a bulb as well and you can obviously just keep them attached and then they will just grow as a second plant in the same pot which can also look very nice. I guess this is the size up that I want to do for the alocasia. Same procedure as before. I'm going to do the same little trick. Take it out so I have the perfect hole in the same size and now I can just stick my alocasia in and then cover it a little bit with fresh soil. You don't want to press it too hard but you want to press it a little bit. I think gardeners always use like two fingers on each hand and then press down once like this and this should be enough pressure to hold it in place but it's not too compacted already. Yeah, this looks great. I love it. Let's give them a little shower. Here are our three finished up and potted up plants and I will now monitor them closely how they react to their new soil. If I notice the water retention is too high I might add a little bit more perlite or bark to the soil. If everything looks fine then I'll just keep it as is. I had a lot of fun playing with soil today. I hope it was helpful to you as well. Let me know what you think of my soil mix. I'll see you next time. Until then enjoy your plants and goodbye!